Hi everyone, welcome back. This is part two of making the camber dress. So in part one, I talked to you all about the design and the inspiration behind the design for the camber dress. And today I'm actually gonna start the construction of it. So, so far I've done two corset twirls with my client and got the fit of that exactly as she wanted it. And um, originally we were gonna do it as a zip up. So this is a hidden corset inside the dress. Originally we were going to do it as a zip up, but because of the waist reduction we want to get the shape that we want, it's actually going to have to lace up and then the dress is going to zip over the top. So that is why there's a zip in it and um, lacing holes at the back too, because when we put it on it just wouldn't zip up comfortably with the waist reduction that we've done. So now I have fitted the second twirl. There was only a minor adjustment to make and it was just a little bit too high under her arm. So I've marked that change on the pattern and I've cut my pattern out just in some calico. So here are my pattern pieces. So I've got center front, side front, side back and center back. Um, when I make corseted dresses, I tend to use a corset pattern with fewer panels because I want it to still look like dress panels at the top. So I use the same shape as I would for a dress to create the corset. Um, a lot of corset patterns have five, six, seven, or even more panels per half. Um, and to then create a nice dress using those patterns is, it ends up looking a bit weird in my opinion, or you use a different pattern um, for the dress and the corset. That's not how I like to do things. So I've developed my corset patterns so they've got um, four panels for making corseted dresses. So now I've got my copy of my corset pattern. I've actually drawn a second copy of it. So the one of these is gonna be for the internal corset and one of them's gonna be for the dress. So for the internal corset, I'm actually gonna cut half an inch off the top all the way around because this is gonna have bias binding at the edge. So I don't need a seam allowance at the top. Then the pattern for the dress that's going to go over the top is exactly the same, but I've added a quarter of an inch. That means that when I sew either a quarter inch or half inch seam allowance, it's going to sit just above the internal corset and hide it really neatly because we don't want to see the edge of that. I also just need, I'd forgotten when I drew it on here, but I actually need to add just a little bit at the centre back for the zip because at the minute this is cut for the gap for the lacing. So I need to add probably a couple of inches and then I've got lots to play with when it's time to put the zip into the dress. So I'm going to cut out both. Um, at some point I will also convert this to be a skirt pattern, but I'll tack that on top when it's time to do the skirt. And I won't know what shape that needs to be until I've got the, the um, internal corset and the petticoat made. Cool, so I'm going to cut both of these out, the internal corset lower at the top and the dress pattern higher at the top. Put the dress pattern to one side for now. So next I'm going to cut out some interfaced satin, which will be my internal corset. I'm going to cut out two sets of the pattern pieces. So I've got the outside and the lining. So I've got all of my interface satin pieces cut out. So I've cut exactly the same satin for the outside and for the lining. The next thing I'm going to do is baste each piece onto a piece of calico for extra strength. If you're going to do this make sure you get a good quality calico and make sure it's got no stretch to it because we want to use this as the strength layer inside the corset. You can also use coutil, a lot of corset makers use coutil. Um, I find it too stiff which is why I prefer calico. Um, you can use any woven fabric that has no stretch to it will act well as your strength layer. This is already pretty strong the satin with the interfacing so by the time I get the two together it's going to grow, make a really strong corset. Um, I'm not going to put a waist tape in because this doesn't have a huge waist reduction, so it doesn't need a waist tape as well. Um, as I baste it, I'm going to make sure my grain lines are exactly across the waist. If the grain lines are off, as you pull your corset tight, it can just um, pull sort of diagonally a little bit, so you need to make sure your waist is exactly on the grain with no stretch. All of my pieces for my corset have now been tacked onto the calico. So next I need to join all the inside pieces together and all the lining pieces together. To do that, I'm gonna pin each piece together, stitch my half inch seam allowance. 
and then stitch along exactly the same line a second time just to make it a little bit stronger. Then I'm going to clip it and then I'm going to top stitch to hold the seam allowances open. I will show, sew a couple of pieces and then show you how that looks. So I'm going to stitch, stitch again, clip and then top stitch it open. This is, I've got different ways of making corsets. This is the method that gives the smoothest finish so you can have your corset as hidden and invisible as possible inside a corseted dress. I'm also going to stitch the ribbon, which will be my hanging loops, into the side seams of the lining layer. So this is how they look once they're sewn. On the right side you can see a line is stitching either side of the seam. And then on the inside, that's how they look. And as I said, I did a double line of stitching as I joined the pieces together. I stitched over it twice. Next, I'm just going to clip this excess off just so it's not in the way. Um, when you put the boning in, if you leave it, sometimes you can see the shape of it sort of behind the boning. So I'm going to clip that and then I'm going to stitch the other panels onto here in exactly the same way. So I've now got both my layers together. So this is my outside layer and my lining layer with my hanging loops in. So that's how they look on the right side and that's how they look on the wrong side with all of those excess seam allowances clipped. So next I'm going to join them together along the centre back seams. So I'm going to put them right sides together, pin the centre backs together and stitch my seam allowance. I'll then under stitch um, the seam allowance to the wrong side, so to the lining side. So my centre backs my centre backs are joined and then I've understitched that seam allowance towards the lining layer. And I'm just going to clip away that excess there. Now I can turn it in the right way and start joining my two layers together. Because this is going to have a dress over it, the outside is actually going to be hidden. So I'm going to do all my stitching from the inside here because this is the layer that will actually be seen on the inside of the dress, so this will be the actual lining of the dress, whereas this, which is the right side and the outside, will be covered by the next layer of dress. So I'm going to do all my pinning and stitching from this side, um, which is kind of goes against what you'd think it would be, but yeah, this is the side that won't be hidden. So to join all my layers together, I'm not going to do anything with the edges at the minute because they're going to have bias binding over them, but what I need to do is join everything together through these seams. So what I'm going to do is put my two layers together and then pin through. See that's gone through exactly the seam on the other side and that's going to line everything up. And then as I go I can do the tops and bottoms as well. So move into the bottom now and gradually work my way up, making sure it's in the right place on the opposite side and if you've cut out everything really accurately you should have no problem with all your panels lining up neatly slightly out this this bit can take a while but it's worth taking your time and getting it right and that's how you get a nice smooth finish on your corset okay so that's how I'm pinning right side and the wrong side so I'm going to do that on all the seams, so pin it all together. I'm then going to stitch right in that ditch there, so stitch right in that seam and then stitch over my lines of stitching here as well and that's going to hold both layers together really sturdily. After I've stitched all the seams together I'm going to stitch my boning channels in. So I'm going to do two boning channels in the centre front, so either side of this front panel. I'm then going to do boning channels just behind each seam and in the centre of these two panels, so the side front and side back panel. And then I'm going to do three lines of stitching at the back, which will be um, for my eyelets with a piece of straight steel boning either side. So stitch the seams, stitch over the top stitching and then stitch all my boning channels. I'll be back to show you what that looks like when it's done. So now I've got all my layers stitched together and I've got all my boning channels stitched as well. So next it's time to bone it. So these ones in the front panel, I'm going to bone just using some plastic Rigoline boning. All of the ones from the side front to the side back seam, I'm going to bone using spiral steel boning. And then the two either side of the eyelets at the back, 
are going to be boned with this straight steel boning. So I'm going to cut those and insert them. I've got lots more information and lots more detailed information about how I do this whole process in my Making the Sunset in France gown videos in those series. Um, I'll link them above and in the description. So if you want any more details on how I do boning and eyelets and things like that, they're all in that series there. So this is the corset with the boning in, with the eyelets in, and I've stitched in my cups and my brand label. So next I need to make the bias binding, which I'm gonna hand sew onto the top and bottom edge. So I'm gonna start by lining up my fabric squarely with the edge of my cutting mat. And then there's a 45 degree line here, which I'm gonna use to line my ruler up and start cutting strips. If I line that up like that at 45 degrees, It's hard filming and trying to do things at the same time because you're often leaning around the camera at a funny angle. I'm going to move that up. So now I've got my 45 degree angle cut. I can use this ruler to cut two inch strips. So I'm going to cut two two inch wide strips in the lengths that I need to go around the top and the bottom of the corset. You can do this with scissors if you don't have a cutting mat and a roller. Now I've got my strips cut, I'm just going to use this metal bias binding maker and I'm going to put my bias binding right side down and push it through. Sometimes you need a pin just to help you get started. See, and then as you pull it through, it, it folds those edges in. So I'm going to take this over to my ironing board and just press that down as it comes through so I get my strip of bias binding nicely ironed. So this is my bias binding. Now I've pressed it. So that's how it looks. Because it's on the bias, it's got that bit of stretch to it to help it go around curves. And then I'm just going to take each piece and I put it right sides down on my corset. And I've just pinned along the crease. So I'm going to hand stitch along that crease. And then once I've done that all the way along, I'm then going to fold it to the opposite side and hand stitch down the other side, just hand catch. So these stitches will be hidden in the turn. And then you'll just do little stitches along the edge to hold this part in place. And at the ends, you just turn that excess in and neaten the ends. So I'm going to sit and hand sew both of those. So a lot of people machine stitch their bias binding on. I hand sew it because I like how it looks. I prefer the finish. And also because I like my bones to come right up to near the edge of the corset. So that's why I do it this way and take the time to hand sew it. So this is the corset all finished with the edging on. I just need to buy some white ribbon to go in the back to lace it up. But the next thing I need to do is add some petticoats to it to create the fullness to go underneath the skirt. 